हेलो गाइस आई होप आई एम ऑडिबल सो लेट्स लेट्स डिस्कस द क्वेश्चंस सो दीज आर द क्वेश्चंस व्हिच आई हैव कलेक्टेड फ्रॉम यू नो डिफरेंट इंस्टीट्यूट्स आस्किंग माय फ्रेंड्स कलीग्स जूनियर्स हु हैव गिवन द इंटरव्यूज ओवर देयर so i'm going to discuss all these uh, so basically these questions were taken from the ncbs iisc iser pune ccmb ncl etc so what i'm going to do right now over here is i'm going to discuss few questions and these questions are divided into three parts okay so around 45 to 50 questions are there so today i'm going to discuss the 15 questions so if it is beneficial just let me also know okay so let's start so before i begin with the question so this is general instructions actually the coming to the point that is the whenever interview asks the questions okay it is not important that you always get the correct answer okay so it is only the approach to the answer that matters sometimes what happens is you know the answer but you are unable to say so even the interview panel people they are also going to help you so that you can get the answer but even after you know several attempts till you are not getting the answer that gives the negative impact to the interview panel okay so if you know the answer if you don't know the answer it's okay but at least you need to try to give the answer now even if what you answer is not what they wanted the most important thing is that you answer any questions logically and rationally okay now think in pictures and videos for getting some answers brush up probability graph starts before you go anywhere so nowadays uh, stats are very important so most of the questions uh, like if you have seen in your csar um, part c basically they always ask like if suppose this many percentage of enzyme activity increases what happens to the rest so such kind of questions are always asked right so you need to understand and uh, apply those in such a way that you are able to understand okay most of the time what happens is that you go to your uh, interview and you say that yes this is my first semester dissertation right and uh, so you are going to show your dissertation so of course whatever kind of work you have done it is going always going to have the graph over there right so some graph will be there so some graph will be there always one second yeah so whenever you draw some graphs will be there and that they are based on that they are going to ask the questions so even if it is your normal x y graph is there they are going to ask let us say what kind of question is there most of the time what happens is that you get a straight line equation is there right so what is a straight line equation y is equal to mx plus c so in such graphs always your slope is important so your slope is going to tell about the importance of the graph so such kind of question they can ask like what do you understand from this graph what you have calculated now what was the regression value over here so even that is important so whenever you study the graphs please study all these parameters also now speak whatever you are thinking so don't just blabber over there uh, uh don't do such things so if you think for a while and then if you say that you don't know then of course you are not going to get selected okay so instead of that you can just say that okay i know this thing maybe this is related to this now if suppose it is correct the interview panel people are going to help you to come and get the answer okay so if you instead of instead if you think and speak what you are thinking simultaneously and it, if it is logical and rational there are high chances of selection even if the answer you arrived it is going to be wrong so always they will give you clues also if you speak what you are thinking so that is very very important so now let's begin our questions so the first question is what do you mean by sense and anti sense dna why do plants produce flowers so first question why do uh, like why do you what do you mean by sense and anti sense dna now why this is important it's because we all know that uh, mrna whenever it is getting transcribed it is going to get selected it is going to transcribe using the sense strand right but still the questions they might ask whatever you get the transcribed mrna what sequence it is going to have whether it is going to be similar to the sense strands or anti sense strands right so if you know the concept behind this then you can answer this this is very simple actually second question is why do plants produce flowers what does nectar have why why the plants have nectar why is evolutionary sucrose sweeter to insects than fructose or glucose so again 
this is something you need to know why do plants produce flowers of course they are the reproductive organs of the plants right so that they can produce the fruits which is having the seeds so that the next generation can be formed right so now why does they have the nectar please guys it's very simple you should know all this thing so i will be i'm just discussing the question over here and not providing the answer because the main motto is that you yourself could get the answer believe me if you're not able to get any answers you can just mention me in the comments so that i can help you in arriving the answer now the third question is what would be the difference between a day blooming flower and a night blooming flower this is also again very simple and direct question why do cellular signaling pathways have multiple steps what advantages does it offer now this is very important i can only say that this is actually going to cross check each other okay this is like ek hai uske upar ek aur boss hai uske upar ek aur boss hai so this is the hint i'm giving you next now this is very interesting now wherever you can see that this asterisk is there it means that totally you have to give your answer based on the logic okay and it should have a rational thinking also now if a snake binds another snake of the same species the other snake does die but snakes can carry the poison within their glands for a long time without dying so this you know and we have also seen why don't snake snakes die from their own poison provide hypothesis and experiments to test this is again a very beautiful question and this is very simple also okay now what are the hormones do plants have hormones this is very simple again direct question so we know that plants are having the phyto hormones are there okay so i don't think such easy or direct questions will be asked unless until your dissertation is having the mention mention of these hormones now next question is there are two types of cells a blue bacterial cell and a white bacterial cell blue cell divides to give two blue cells white cell divides to give one white and one blue cell what is the ratio of blue cells to white cells at 10th generation state starting with only one white cell see so white is going to give you one white and one blue where blue is going to give you two blue so they are asking what will the number of the ratio of the blue uh, ratio of the cells at the 10th generation okay so this is something a logic a little bit of maths is required okay and uh, you can just take the example of stem cell generation okay so you can talk about there also yeah so this is the hint i have already given moving on to the next question so you have measured the length of tails for 100 individual rats and elephants now would you like to compare them uh, using a graph how would you go about it now this is very simple uh, all those students who have done you know their um, and what to say um, making the graphs and all and doing the comparison between the two species and all they can do very easily so think about the scale it means what the scale which you are going to use is very important over here then next draw the graph of this x square minus x x square is equal to y square x square equal to y y square is equal to x this is again very simple so if you suppose you don't know how to do what you can do is put the values of x and y okay so you can start by taking x is equal to 0 x is equal to 1 so if when x is 0 what is y when x is 1 what is y and based on that you can just plot the graph okay so again very simple uh, bacterial species divides every 20 minutes another species divides every 30 minutes okay what would be the ratio of their populations after 10 hours starting from one cell from each species this is again similar to the previous question what we have discussed you know talking about the uh, blue cells and the white cells so similar this is also there so i'm going to give you one hint is that the final number of cells is equal to the i that is initial cell into the 2 raised to n okay so this is a formula you can use it and arrive at the situation uh, arrive at the answer okay now you have introduced a mutant protein into a cell which has a wild type copy of the protein intact now this transfected cell line, cell dies explain what all could have happened that caused the cell to die the cell and the wild type copy intact so that uh, it it should have lived actually so again i'll make it simple for you so they are saying that you have got a uh, let me just take the another one yeah so they are saying that you have got the mutant cell and the wild type cell is there okay so you have made the uh, mutant that the protein has been made mutant sorry not like this so you have got the cell in that you have got the wild type cell and the mutant protein is there now uh, this transfected cell is dead 
even though wild type copy of the protein is present still the cell is dead right so we know that even if the mutant protein is there and you have got the wild type protein so because of the presence of the wild type protein the cell should survive but it has been dead why so that is the question okay now next question what is the probability that two people share their birthday in a room full of seven people 10 people 100 people etc this is again probability based question and very easy also now why are bacterial cells the size they are why are they not bigger why the eukaryotic cells are bigger so here you need to talk about a protein called mrp okay so all these hints i'm giving so it's your duty to go and find out the answers of these and be prepared for your interviews now draw the graph of product concentration versus time then double the enzyme concentration again draw on the same axis okay so what is happening you have got the uh, product concentration versus the time and then what you're going to do you you have increased the concentration of the enzyme so what will happen to the product right so more the enzyme more the product formation will be there so how uh, it is going to affect the graph so double the substrate concentration and again draw the same plot so this is how you're going to develop a general such equation so if you can understand the michaelis menten equation okay so over there you know the graph there just increase the enzyme concentration substrate concentration and just check how the graph is going to get affected so the hint over here is michaelis menten equation now why does a drop of water take up the spherical shape why not cube or cylinder what's so special about this shape so this has to do something about the surface area okay so these are all the hints i have given to you so thank you guys uh, if any doubts are there regarding the questions and all please uh, i welcome you to comment uh, in the comment section or you can also message me in the telegram excelsior academy and uh, yeah, if any doubts are there, I'm happy to help you. So this was only the first 15 questions. Uh, the next 15 questions I'll be taking in the next sessions. Okay. So around 45 to 50 questions I have got. So I decided to split it into three. And so that we can discuss and get the answers. So hope this is going to help you. Thank you.